Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Combalusier, a mining analyst here at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Adport Mines, which is a gold uh, developer and exploration company with strategically located properties in northwestern Quebec. Abcourt owns the sleeping giant mill and mine where it is concentrating its activities. The company plans to build the lower area of the mine to access the, the reserves and plans to rehabilitate the upper area of the mine to add more resources. The company also plans to advance and update the resource estimates at the Discovery Florida deposits to add more ounces available near the sleeping giant mill. It also just entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Pershamex resources in an all-share deal to create one of the largest property portfolios amongst school explorers in Quebec. Today, I have with me on the webinar Pascal Hamlin, who's the President and Chief Executive Officer at Abcourt. The format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first part, Pascal will provide an overview of Abcourt, and then in the second, we'll take your questions live. So please use the chat to send in your questions, and we'll get to as many as we can. To start, we'll handle the disclosures and then get into the presentation. So for Abcourt Mines, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Abcourt corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Abcourt specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Pascal to update you on Abcourt and what you have to look forward to with the story. Thank you, Taylor, for the intro. And uh, thanks for the, um, the forward looking uh, statement. So, um, yeah, so uh, for me, I'm very pleased to, uh, to provide an update on our activities uh, with Menard Court uh, in the in, in the ABTB cap. Um, myself, for those of you that don't know me yet, I'm a mining engineer over 31 year in the industry, uh, both in Ontario and Quebec, all in underground deposits, uh, the last 16 years in narrow vein mining. So forward looking statement, uh, I would just like to add that uh, if you see any dollar figures, it's all Canadian dollars, except uh, stated otherwise. Uh, the rest has been, uh, Taylor um, uh, mentioned the forward looking statement. So now, why invest in Abcourt? Well, there's many reasons. First, we're in Quebec. We're, uh, we have a large portfolio of, uh, of, of exploration properties. Uh, all in the gold, we have some base metal, uh, we have a central mill, fully permitted, 750 tons a day, um, and 14 advanced exploration projects. So that's, that's, where we, that's, that's the picture today. So how do we create value? Well, advancing our properties, uh, of course, through drill bit, through exploration, but also through getting the sleeping giant in production. And also we uh, made a proposal to the Pershmex uh, shareholders to acquire them for an all share transaction valued at 3.2 million. Um, our plan is to get the sleeping giant uh, mine going. We have 85,000 ounces actually in reserve from uh, a, a, a resource calculation that was done in 2018 and the reserve were calculated in 2019. Right now, we're doing a resource update because there's been drilling since that time. And also the, uh, the former, uh, well, the actual resource estimate was done using polygonal and, and the old method of uh, paper section. So there's a lot more to see and you'll see some slides on that uh, a little bit later. Um, so we expect the resource to be out in Q4 of this year, and there's excellent potential to extend the life of mine of the sleeping giant deposit. Right now, we're, we're a $14 million market cap company with, uh, with a mill, 85,000 ounces of reserve, and a lot of exploration assets. So for us, uh, we see this as very compelling as an investment, like to come in right now just because of all this. Uh, the assets going into production shortly, and a lot of resources. Management team, which is important when you make a, an investment decision, 
myself, uh, CEO, Guillaume Levin is an operator with over 20 years of experience in underground mining. He's the general manager of the mine site. Mario Blanchet, chief engineer, has been uh, at Sleeping Giant before. He knows the mine inside out. Uh, Itam Benya, chief geologist, lives in Ibitsubi, and he's, um, he's our chief geologist, over 15 years of experience in uh, narrow vein mining. And Kistin, our CFO, is based in Rwanda. Aranda. Uh, she's got a lot of experience with uh, public listed company. Now, the board of director, the board well versed uh, with different background. We have uh, we have business people, uh, we have mining engineers, lawyers, uh, accountant, um, uh, exploration geologists, and Joe. So, well versed. Now, this board's going to be uh, if the shareholder approved the transaction of acquiring Pershimex, there'll be some. Of course, myself, I'll be joining the board, as well as uh, Louis Bureau from Pershimex will join the, the board of director of uh, Abcourt Mine. Uh, one thing to note, uh, Renaud and Francois, uh, the chairman and the director, between the two of them, own 36% of the uh, company. So our portfolio, you see uh, Sleeping Giant Mine, the, the big blue star. This is where our mine end mill is located. Um, Flood Day and Discovery, which is uh, the next project we're working on after Sleeping Giant, five and six. There's over 800,000 ounces of historical resource there. We're in the process of updating the resource and bring them to 2022. Um, that will be done in the first half of 2023. But first and foremost, a sleeping giant mine and mill, um, fully permanent again. And uh, we're doing the resource update will be out uh, before the end of this year. Our base metal assets we have uh, in green, what you see in green here, uh, three and four are the zinc uh, deposit, Barview and Vendome, and seven is the Elder Mac, which is a copper deposit uh, west of Ryan Aranda. So you see, we have a lot of exploration asset, all in Quebec and a central mill. Now the Sleeping Giant mine, uh, this mine is a past producing asset. Uh, the historical grade was, um, the head grade to the mill was uh, close to 11 grams. Our resource, the 2019 resource is at 11.2 and 7.9 for the uh, probable uh, and proven reserve. Um, so a lot of uh, low capex, just because all the infrastructures are in place. The mill is on operation. The mill was actually processing material from the former elder mine uh, between 2016 and uh, August 2022. So it just got put on care and maintenance. Right now, we're doing the mill cleanup. Uh, we're extracting a lot of ounces of gold from that mill. If you wonder where our revenue are coming from right now, it's coming from the mill cleanup. Um, just in, uh, since, uh, since October 1st, we poured close to a thousand ounces just from the mill cleanup. Uh, so the employees at the sites are doing technical work, uh, doing the resource update, getting the 23 detailed budget ready, and also maintaining the asset. Uh, the, all the underground is accessible, maintained dry. So like I mentioned, uh, Sleeping John was in operation. Uh, over A little bit over a million ounces was extracted at a 10.3 gram per ton. Uh, the historical recovery was over 96%. So a very, very uh, efficient mill. Uh, we have a shaft as close to uh, 4,000 feet deep. Uh, access all developed on every level. So for us, it's rehabbing doing the rehab of the the existing uh, opening and then doing the the little bit of development left at the end of the drift to access the new zone uh, the mill uh, mill and tilling facility are fully permitted so there's no there's just ma maintenance costs and upgrade costs to do and on the mill and on the tailings uh, we're fully permitted uh, this morning there was a note 
on Pershmex uh, website that uh, Pershmex now has the uh, processing permit to process the 5,000 tons of the bulk sample from the Pershing Many 2 deposit. So when we uh, resume activity uh, uh, after, after the winter in the spring 2023, we'll be in a position to process the material from the sleeping uh, from the um, Pershing Many 2 deposit. So sleeping giant mine, uh, it's 85,000 ounces of reserve from the 2019 uh, reserve uh, technical report. We're looking at uh, four years operation, but all this going to be uh, when you see the, the updated resource uh, in Q4 2022, you're going to see that this eventually will be reworked also. But this is the base case. We can start with this. And then uh, we we build up from that with the uh, the reserve uh, the resource update and the reserve update uh, later in 2023. A little bit of uh, what you see here is uh, the deposit isometric view of the deposit with the shaft. All the openings, all the drifts are existing. We even have an exploration drift to the east into a new zone that was never extracted. So a lot of potential to extend the life of mine by just doing the finishing drilling and also uh, doing uh, geology interpretation. For example, this year, what you see, all these red dots are uh, area outside the mine out uh, of the mine. Uh, we took out all the intercept from the geology model that are intercepting area that are already mined out. Um, what you see here is there's a lot of uh, the red represent over 100 grams per ton, uh, orange is 50 grams, and uh, yellow is 30 grams per ton. So there's a lot of geology work that's been done. We took a snapshot. We, we said, okay, we're going to publish the resource uh, before the end of this year. So we put a hold on the mineralization interpretation. We're going to continue after the resource is uh, published. There is more work to do, but we have a snapshot that we can release now. This is a section looking west. So you can see already the trend uh, within the deposit. And you see it also looking north. This is a new zone, well, a new zone, a zone that's been identified by Conbjor back in the 2000, but it's been, there's some drilling done, even confirmation of um, traces of uh, mineralization between uh, the main zone and that zone to the east, but no drilling in between. So this is an excellent exploration zone to follow up and it's near surface. Now you see this here, when you start rotating the, the deposit, you see all these intercepts only start lining up. And that's what we're going to be. Of course, this is what the geologists are working on right now. So I'm really excited. I'm really uh, anxious to present that resource update uh, sometime in December. Again, you see the plan view of the same thing. When you look at it, you know, pure plan view. And then when you start rotating, whoop then uh, the veins start to show up and then you see the exploration potentials. Another view again, target number two, you see here. So a lot, it's, it's very clear that you're gonna drill here, but also extract th these veins here. This is, this is gonna be a resource, definitely resource and possibly a reserve. Same thing, other targets. I could keep going like this. It's uh, there's there's many of them that we need to follow up on. So that's what the geo. We have a full staff. Uh, we're fully staffed with the geologists now to do all this work, and that's what they're focusing on. We're even going to look back at the the old core. Uh, all the cores are kept at the site, so we're going to re-examine some of the core because we see that there are some drill holes that been through a, a zone but no assay. So it's not that it's uh, it, it returned a low grade or zero grade. It, it was not assay. So it was missed by the geo at the time. So we're going to reopen those box and re-assay them where we see fit. 
again, just to show you target one, you see all the targets, this will be on our website. So you can look at it at your leisure, but a lot of places that we, we see opportunities to grow the resource. Now, discovery and flooding. Those are two deposits. Those are pretty interesting because there's a lot of ounces and it's not too far from the mill. We're looking at less than uh, 100 kilometers uh, from the sleeping giant mill. Um, both are uh, near infrastructure and the city of La Belle sur uh, About six, uh, flood day is about six kilometers from the highway. And uh, uh, Discovery, I believe, is like 12 kilometers from the highway. Uh, Discovery is a, a, a narrow vein underground deposit with over 500,000 ounces of historical resource. Uh, the resource were done 43-101 in 2008. And but there's been drilling since, so these these numbers needs to be updated. Same thing for Flaudin. Flaudin is five kilometers away from Discovery, and that one's an open pit. Uh, both both deposits are 100% uh, owned by Abcorp. So there will be some exploration work in 2023 on this and the resource update. Now we also have. Uh, uh, base metal assets. Uh, the Abcor Barview is a zinc deposit, zinc, zinc, lead, silver, um, with an open pit and uh, an underground resource. Uh, the open pit was in operation in the 50s. Um, now Abcor uh, owns 100% own this deposit. Um, it's uh, the the site the site. The site is ready to to go. We have a, a substation right at the uh, right at the site. It needs to put the infrastructure in place to start the extraction of the open pit. And now this deposit is 12 kilometers from the railroad. So once the material uh, goes on the train, then it can go to any concentrator or smelter in North America. So what we're looking at. With this uh, bar view deposit, of course, this cannot be processed at the Sleeping Giant Mill. Our Sleeping Giant Mill is is for gold. Uh, it's not made for base metal. So us, it's uh, we're, we're considering with the, the base metal asset is to do spin out, uh, put them put them in a separate company where Accord shareholders and Accord owns the the shares of this uh, this new co. So this is something we're considering for 2023 as well. Um, now, a little bit of detail about Pershimex. So Pershimex, we entered into uh, an LOI in June. We, we signed a binding LOI um, in early October. Now we have the definitive agreement signed. It will be presented to the shareholder of, um, of Pershimex on December 20th um, to accept the offer from the uh, from Abcourt. Uh, the Abcourt shareholders will be asked to vote in favor of changing the name of the company. We're looking at to reflect our focus on gold. Uh, we want to. We're proposing to our shareholders to be named Infinitas Gold, and the also we're considering uh, a share consolidation with the concurrent with the financing and the acquisition of Pershimex. So the financing is to get the sleeping giant mine um, up and running. So what's the benefit? Of course, for us, Abcourt, we're acquiring um, high, high, um, high quality deposit in the camp, uh, especially the per Pershing 92 uh, deposit. It's a deposit. It's very early stage uh, deposit as far as the drilling goes, but high grade on surface. Uh, Pershimex got the green light to do a 5,000 ton bulk sample. The material is broken on surface. Now uh, we were waiting for the permit. We, we got it now. So now we're going to be, when we resume activities next spring, we'll be in a, a, in a position to process that material to complete the bulk sample. Um, for the app, uh, for the Pershimex shareholder, what they do, uh, what's the benefit for them is they co they go from a micro cap exploration company to an emerging gold producer. So right there, you get the the upside potential plus uh, you, you you get into a company where you start generating cash. 
Now, the Pershing Mani 2, the, you see the 5,000 ton bulk sample at the heart of the deposit. Um, it's a 5,000 ton bulk. Uh, the estimate is about 7.2 grams. So excellent, excellent uh, revenue right up front. So for, for us, Abcourt, it's, um, uh, we're able to convert uh, shares into cash rather quickly with this investment with uh, into Pershimex. And we get the upside of drilling at depth. It's not tested. So there's a lot of uh, exploration potential on that deposit. So to summarize, we're, we're doing the 3D model for the sleeping giant mine. We're going to do the resource update. We're going to finance and rehabilitate the uh, sleeping giant mine and begin gold extraction and gold production in 2023. It's going to be a quick ramp up, nine months to, to go from uh, startup to uh, starting to process material. Uh, in parallel to that, we're updating the resource at sleeping at uh, Flood Day and Discovery. Uh, that's going to be the exploration team's going to be looking at that. And also, we're going to do exploration, of course, uh, near the sleeping giant mine and Flood Day and Discovery. We're going to complete the acquisition of Pershimex in early 2023. And then we're looking at considering the spin out of the base metal asset into a new coal to benefit all our uh, Abcourt shareholders uh, to, to be uh, supportive of this, um, of this transaction. So if you look at who has mill in the camp and who has uh, a permanent mine, there's not many of us among the explorers. There's only a few. And you look at where we're sitting as far as uh, the value per ounces, this is that slide alone tells you to to um, to invest into Abcourt just because of the, uh, the 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 value of the share per ounces. Also, if you look at once we start to be in production, right now we're a fourteen million dollar market cap company with a, a an operating mill and eighty five thousand ounces of reserve. So um, once we get into production, our market cap should go up. You know. So this, this is why we're pushing to get the sleeping giant mine up and in production. So again, in Quebec, over 500 kilometers, square kilometers of exploration property. We're acquiring Pershimex. We're going to be active in the camp. We're an emerging gold producer and a lot of compelling value and re-rating once we get sleeping giant in production. So on this, uh, Taylor, I pass you the mic. Great. Thanks a lot, Pascal. It was a great presentation. Thank um, you. So now we'll uh, turn to the Q&A portion of the webinar. Just a reminder to everybody on the line that you can submit your questions using the chat. Um, we have one that's uh, come in uh, right now. Just wondering if you could uh, say a few words maybe about the your ESG um, uh, outreach and strategy uh, at the company. Okay, the, uh, the ESG, well, first, the, we're, we're in the Anishinaabe land. So this is the First Nation, 80 kilometers south of the mine. So we're, uh, we're in discussion with the Anishinaabe to sign a, an agreement with them to incorporate them in our business plan, which is uh, providing uh, opportunities for the contractors from the community, but also opportunity for employment. So that's, that's our big focus. Um, on the corporate side, we're going to be uh, focusing on increasing the, uh, the gender uh, to come to par. Right now, it's uh, six to one. So we need to move towards 50-50. Uh, so there'll be, um, there'll be action on that. So this is where we, we focus our, um, our energy. On the environmental side, of course, uh, or in Quebec, so the 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 there's a, many things we take for granted, but they're important. Uh, the tailing facility, um, the the mine site, everything needs to be um, to be uh, to to our expectation, but also the expectation of the uh, the surrounding communities where we operate. Perfect. Okay. 
Um, so just turning to the um, on the project level, I guess, um, you know, talked a lot about the, the Sleeping Giant Mine and the, the resource uh, that's uh, imminent there. Um, you know, what, I guess, once that's delivered, what, what do your efforts turn to at that project and kind of what's the, the timeline going forward? What does that kind of look like um, once you've got that resource in hand? Okay, once we have the resource at hand, uh, of course, we're, we're in discussion since, uh, since uh, last spring for the financing. Mm -hmm. Sleeping Giant is going to need cash, okay? There's no two, like, it, it's, it's, a, it's an obvious thing. Uh, now, uh, what we're going to be looking at is a blend of debt, equity, um, you know, if there's, we're going to be looking at every scenario. So the due diligence already started with a few funds, so, and banks were well advanced. Of course, everyone is waiting for the resource update to be out. So I'm expecting the financing to be completed in Q1 2023 and construction and rehab and hiring in early Q2. Uh, the sleep camp is on the critical path. We already have the permit for the sleep camp. So it's not a, a permitting issue. It's a, a funding and also, well, we're pouring gold right now. So we have the funds, but you don't start building a, a, a sleep camp four weeks before Christmas. No one does that. So uh, this is throwing money in the air. So we're going to do that in the spring we're going to build the camp and then but we're going to be ready when the camp when the camp is built we're going to the men will be starting and we're going to start with the rehab of the underground working and nine months later pouring gold right and will, you'll just be doing kind of a, an internal mine plan update is that uh, what you're looking at or will there be an updated economic study as well there will be an economic but on the new resource, what we did is we used the 2019 reserve where we updated the mine plan. The mine plan is all done. We presented that to the bank. Uh, they're using this. Uh, they're using our uh, cash flow model for the um, for the financing for their due diligence. Uh, but what, there will be a reserve update and in, in, I would say Q2 2023. And that will be based on the new resource. Uh, we're going to release in q4 okay great um so we we talked quite a bit or you talked quite a bit about the um you know being able to looking at spinning out the base metal assets next year uh and kind of the focus um on uh, discovery in florida after the um after the sleeping giant mine in, in terms of priority um what about the rest of your portfolio is that um you know future upside that you're going to look at kind of once you get sleeping giant kind of up and running again um how does that kind of fit into the the broader strategy because it is quite a large um uh, portfolio you have now yeah it is a large portfolio so that gives us the the flexibility so that's that's what you're looking for you're looking at flexibility you're looking also having a, a um because you don't know where you're going to discover you, you, you got all these exploration assets, but if you only have one, you're gonna you're gonna stick to it until until you run out of cash, you know. So us, when we see that a, a deposit or an exploration uh, sector is, it, it's been you know, we tested it, you know, with the, the the today's technique, and if we and if we don't find anything, we're gonna move on to the next one. We got 14 of them, but. We're not going to let them go for nothing. Uh, like they're all cashed up. Like as far as credits to go against the uh, the sales, the, the claims. So there's no there's no rush for us to 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 do works on all 14 of them at once. Or right, we can focus on Sleeping Giant. We're going to focus on Floodland Discovery and of course Pershing Many Two if the Pershing Max shareholder accept the uh, transaction. Um, Pershing many two, it's not drilled and it's high grade on surface. So that that has to be drilled. Now, uh, you, you for the Pershing X shareholders, do you uh, invest at two sets or you invest in a company that will will grow because you're you're producing gold? You know, so that's 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 the that's the logic of uh, uh, being acquired by court is you're going to be able to finance the growth of the Pershing Mani 2, which is a very good deposit, very compelling, uh, very interesting. You know, it's been under the radar. Uh, like 
it's it's on the greenstone belt it's on the fault like it's got all the characteristics but it's not on the Cadillac fault so historically people were looking at the Cadillac fault and then suddenly whoop people are studying starting to move a little bit further north and guess what detour gold now you got windfall that's being drilled you know they're not on the Cadillac fault but there's a lot of that like the goal is not all between Timmins and Valdor you know there's there's a second second line and then the third line and then you you keep going north right yeah okay and um we have another question in um just just wondering how much uh, money you'll need to start sleeping giant or what the most recent number is on that well that, that's a forward-looking statement <laughs> yeah. uh I would say I'll be I'll be uh, I'll I'll provide a range uh, between twenty and twenty five million. That will be the requirement for Sleeping Giant, and it's mostly on the ground development. Yeah, with the uh, uh, the mine just or sorry the rather the mill just going on care of maintenance uh, recently, as you say, it's uh, obviously not going to really need much to to get it back uh, going in a short like, like anything like any mechanical parts, you yeah. you need to invest money. It's like a car. If you don't change your oil, eventually it's going to go to the boneyard. Mm -hmm. So you're going to invest on your mill too, uh, but it's minor compared to building a mill. Right. And um, with it running, I mean, are, do you have to look at doing any kind of optimizations there, or is it just the the maintenance and getting it up? And no maintenance. So the the mill super, you know, is going to say, well, uh, that pump's been giving me problem for the last two years. I need to change that pump. All right, well, okay, it's fifty grand, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you know, you're not looking at major investment. It's mm -hmm. and there's and that twenty like twenty twenty five million. There's also um, uh, investment in the tillings. You know, you got to keep up, updating, uh, raising your uh, your dikes. So and 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 monitoring. So and yeah, there's always new tools that comes out. You know, like uh, with technology. So you you got to invest. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, so I think we're we're running out of questions here. Um, I'll just put out a, a last call, and I'll kind of give you the kind of the last word uh, if you want to, um, you know, kind of give a summary of the catalyst or just the final word and your final pitch. Um, we'll see if any other questions come in uh, before we wrap up, but I'll turn it over to you. Okay. So there's no other questions. Uh, not right now, but I'll, I'll give people a couple minutes okay, while you. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So yeah. So $14 million market cap, where else can you find a $14 million market cap company with an existing mill fully permitted with the telling facility? 85,000 ounces of reserve and a lot of room for growth. Um, you don't find that anywhere else. So this is this is the sales pitch. <laughs> um, so yeah, with that, we there. I guess there is a question. Uh, just wondering about tailings. Um, you know, with uh, I guess what you have and capacity and all that. If you can maybe give us an overview of the the tailings situation. We have a question on that. Okay, well, uh, I have we hired on Globe, uh, Joe Technical Engineering Firm from Montreal, um, to to give me a five year uh, the position plan. So that's underway. Uh, right now, verbally, they told me I have over five years of the position uh, capacity, but they're gonna they're gonna like verbally and on papers two things. So the I'm waiting, and I will be incorporated in the uh, reserve update that will be done in Q2 2023. So the existing cells, cell number, uh, like lift numbers, like there's three cells in the uh, in the telling facility. Cell number three is empty. There's never been any pulp, um, and the plan is not to have pulp in that cell. That will be eventually the recirculation water for the mill. Cell number two, and uh, you can think of cell one two and three about the same size okay cell number two there's been just a little bit of pulp in the last uh, 30 years the majority of the pulp went in cell number one they're on lift number six uh they've been depositing as uh, the pulp and those and that cell number one since uh, 87. 
So, and cell number two is not touched. So, like, if you use the rule of thumb, uh, that's a forward-looking statement. Again, you could see that cell number two has got room for another 20 years. Perfect. Okay. I think that uh, answered the question pretty well there. Um, so I, I think that is everything that's that's come in. So I think, you know, we'll, we'll wrap things up there. Um, you know, very good presentation. It's good to see all the, the changes that are, are happening at AppCore, and there's lots of catalysts in the in the coming months, so lots to look forward to there. Um, so I would like to thank Pascal from Abcourt Mines uh, for taking the time to host the webinar today with Red Cloud Securities, and thank you to everybody on the line uh, for tuning in with us today. Very good, Taylor. Thank you.